Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MFC welterweight Nathan Coy. Nathan, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Nathan, you got a fight coming up at MFC 33, May 4th, for the world welterweight title against Ryan McGilvery. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, training has been better. Uh, it's been on point. Got a great training partner. Good coaches helping me along the way. Uh, you know, doing my thing. Uh, just trying to get better. Is this your third or fourth training camp with American Top Team? Uh, I've never really had training camps. I, I train every day. Um, so I've been doing this since July with American Top Team. You said you don't really do training camps. Uh, you've known that you were going to fight Ryan McGilvery since the last time you fought back in January. When did you start training for this fight? You know, a week after, two weeks, a couple days? What exactly was the timetable for you starting training? Uh, I think it was 1986. I, was there, I got in the wrestling room. Uh, my dad took me to practice one day. And, and uh, since then, I've been training for this moment right here. Good answer. Nathan, I've always been curious. How did you get your nickname, Soul Force? I got my nickname, uh, I was intrigued by Mahatma Gandhi, he, uh, he kind of led a, a, a movement by example, uh, he was, uh, you believe that if you, uh, inside, you, you believe in something, it, it will, it will bring Syria out, it will lead, um, uh, it, it's basically kind of principled in the practice, so I just translated kind of that into, you know, training every day, giving it my all, uh, morally being a good person, In your last fight against Diego Lima, not a lot of people thought, you know, that you'd be able to get past him. Did coming in on short notice, did that work to your advantage? Because, you know, his original opponent, Bruno Carvalho, he's more of a striker. Did that work to your advantage in the fight? Uh, um, I don't, you know, I, no, I would say it didn't work to my advantage. I think we all trained by heart the night of the fight, and he was ready to fight the night of the fight, and I was. How did you get with the MFC? When this fight came up, were you contacting them? Did they come to you? How did this relationship start? Yeah, they were, uh, you know, calling around, looking, you know, the point of me and had back out, and they were looking for some to take fight. Apparently his name was uh, well recognized. Some fighters don't want to fight him. Uh, it came across my lap. So it was fine for me. I took the fight. So MFC contacted me. Obviously, you're going to be able to tell me better, you know, after the fight, but Ryan McGilvery, is he better, in your opinion, than Diego Lima? You know, what have you seen off the of tape? That What does he bring to the table? Better or I equal to? Uh, I'd say he's, he's definitely he's a bit different than Lima. Um, his technique, his, his skill set's a little bit different, but I think both are, are, are good opponents. I think uh, Ryan, you know, he, I think he's a scrapper. I think he's a tough guy. I think he wants to fight, wants to get on there and scrap it out. And I don't know. There's not a whole lot of difference between those guys. But I think he gives this level all players to stand. They want to, they train hard, you know. This fight is going to take place in a cage because the MFC is... The last I heard it is a ring. Oh, it's, it is going to be a ring. I don't know. That's what I thought I heard. Yeah. Oh. Well, I really don't know because, um, you know, they've been going back and forth, yeah, ring, cage. And this one is going to be the first time to see fighting the cage, and then I think, for whatever reason, uh, Patrick just wanted to keep her in the ring. Oh. Uh, I think he likes the stand-ups. You know, I think he likes the referee get involved in a fight and put people back on their feet. So, I think that's why we're in a, in a ring again. Ryan McGilvery, he's, he's had a lot of, of weird injuries. He cuts easy. Is, is elbows... Is that going to be a big part of your game going in? Oh, I'd love to throw some elbows, absolutely. I think that being on top and throw some big elbows, trying to open up some cuts with the... That'd be real nice, yeah. I think that'd be a good strategy. 
He's got good submissions off his back. For lack of a better term, what worries you more, his his stand up or submissions off his back? Well, I you have to say the submissions. You know, he, he finishes people with submissions. I don't know how many finishes he has with uh, his stand up, but uh, not taking anything away from that. But uh, hey, yeah, definitely dangerous off his back. You know, you gotta. The last time a Canadian fought an American for the MFC welterweight title, it was Ryan Ford versus Pat Healy. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. How much? How much do you buy into that? Because you know Healy, he just came into the MFC, much how you just came into the MFC. Ryan McGilvery, although he had his little stint in the UFC, his majority of his career has been fought in the MFC. How much do you do you kind of buy into that? Like the stars aligning, and you know maybe history will repeat itself. Right. I remember that pretty well. And, right. Uh, came in there and uh, beat a Canadian in his own, you know, home country. I, you know, love the same opportunity to happen. Uh, you know, you know, it's a nice, nice thing to go into somebody's home country and fight hard and, and fight for a belt. And uh, you know, yeah, should be good. I'd like to repeat what Pat did. Mm-hmm. I'd like to finish, get finished in the fight. You know. Do you still have the sport fight? Walter White Tider, are you still the champion of that organization? I am still a champion, yes I am. And this, if you win this title, this will be your second belt, or do you have more? Uh, this will be my second belt. Any plans on going back there to defend it? Uh, I mean, it could happen. I mean, sure. I, you know, the white scenario popped up, I'd definitely take that opportunity. Are you still on good terms with the guys at Team Quest, even though you're no longer training there? Your run with Strike Force ended on back to back losses. The fight with Tyron Woodley, arguably you won the fight. I mean, depending on you know who you talked to, they'd say you won the fight. What exactly happened with Strike Force? Was your contract up or did they cut you? What exactly happened with them? I, I believe Zuba took over at that point. Uh, I don't know how much they knew of my, my fights, you know, that they you know, watched the tapes and seeing what kind of fighter I was. Uh, I have reason to believe they kind of came across my name, seeing that I lost two and they cut me, just they basically had to. I also like to think that they did it for my sake because uh, I think Strike Force is a hard organization to fight for. You know, they. Uh, a lot of the guys don't have many fights, but I like to think that it's, they were to give me more fights, more opportunities, so they got me. So I, I think, you know, it all worked out well at the end, you know. Uh, I was able to get a few fights and get going, change some things up. Just a nice top game. Found some great training, some great coaching. We got, you know, some bad experience, so it all worked out. So I got an email and they decided to go a different direction, so, you know, that's what happened. How have you envisioned the fight ending? Um, elbows to the head, blood on the mat, uh, exhausted opponent underneath me. I don't know, something like that would be nice. Are you predicting a finish or a decision? What? How, how, how has this been played, I played out? I love a finish. I love to predict a finish. I realize that as this you know, sport evolves, you know, these guys are getting better. It's not easy to finish. People think, you know, why are guys finishing well? It's because guys train their ass off to fight. They love being in the ring or cage. Uh, they want to be there. They want to the advance their career. They're not going to give up easily. Um, that being said, you know, I, the aim is always to get a finish. You know, I don't want to be 
Nathan, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Uh, well, I have a few sponsors, but I, I can't name them all right now. I don't want to make anybody out. I'd love to thank uh, my, my team, my top team, I appreciate the support, and uh, my wife and my daughter, you know, just giving me support, and uh, working class, people who didn't work long hours to support their family. You know, I, I do this for them, though. It gives me strength thinking about people who get up early to support their family, you know, getting them to grind. You know, it's harder than the grind I have to put myself to the so I, I like to put my head in, in the right position and see. But, you know, I just, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. They're mostly a fan, so working class, appreciate your hard work. Nathan, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck at MFC 33, May 4th, against Ryan McGilvery.